What is up, my friends? Welcome back to another live video. I'm in my uh, garage gym here. You guys can see we got like lights and stuff. I used to do videos out here. Uh, anyway, just wanted to hop on quick here, kind of check in with you guys, touch base, see how your week is going. And I got a, I got a study here. Oh, that's my phone beeping at me saying I only have a little bit of battery left. Uh, check out the study. I know you can, you're can. you seeing this backwards. So uh, we're going to talk about this study right here. Let me actually read to you. The t Deanna, you got that yummy? Oh my gosh. Deanna has... What's up, guys? Thanks for being here. So the title of the study, for those of you all watching the replay uh, or that you're on right now, the title of the study that we're talking about as soon as Deanna shares with us her fatty dessert that she made is called The Gut Microbiota Mediates the Anti... I'll start over. The Gut Microbiota Mediates the Anti-Seizure Effects of the Ketogenic Diet. It was published in Cell... Uh, some researchers at UCLA uh, studied it. So, hey, thanks for, Jacqueline, thanks for the uh, feedback on the uh, the video on the beach. Do you guys want a really good keto recipe? Hey guys, okay. how are you? Yeah, looking this rough. Is, looking this is Deanna. Rough, looking rough. It's okay, all good. Look at this. Just made it. Mm. And so mm. the ingredients, I mean, there's a little bit of carb in it, but it's from cauliflower. Let me just taste guys. test it. From frozen cauliflower. Cauli no way. Yeah, so. Do you guys believe that, cauliflower? We're coming out with a... Uh, recipes like 30 recipes hey, what you can LF. do with cauliflower. So we're super oh my excited. Dudes, so no there's kidding. Like raw nut butter in here, full fat coconut milk, frozen cauliflower to make it super thick. Let's give Nezzy some. And then um, a little bit Nezzy, of monk fruit. I'm gonna flip it around, guys. And then Lily's chocolate chips. You ready? Dun, 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 dun. Hey Whoa. Kim, what's happening? Good. Like super good. <laughs> and I add a little cinnamon. Hold so. it up. Let me see. No. Should we give it to the dogs? Heck no. Rainier, do you want some? He's like, uh, yeah, is it keto? Super thick. So it's kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. It's like, I call it like a cauliflower fluff. Let me try again. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's really, mm. there's a lot of, like, it creates a lot of satiety. Um, you don't need a lot to be full. Like, literally, I have two ounces and I'm good. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I made it from frozen cauliflower and nut butter, like a quarter cup of nut butter and half a ripe avocado. And then monk fruit, erythritol blend. It's the powdered stuff by Lakanto. It's my favorite. A little pinch of sea salt. Yeah. Cool. You can make a chocolate um, blend too. That's awesome, guys. So what I'm yeah. going to do in our free e-course, uh, if you sign up for that and you can get access to the Keto Lean Masterclass, and there's actually, you can get recipes like that. So if you want to learn more low-carb recipes, desserts, everything like that, um, that is there. So after I finish this video, I'll put a link to the free e-course. And then, of course, if you want even more recipes in the Keto Lean Masterclass, $47. It's an amazing value. All right, so so we're back. We're talking science. Deanna, thanks for sharing that. So this is a study for those of you guys that are on right now. We're talking about how the ketogenic diet affects the gut bacteria and then how that in turn affects systemic metabolism. Let me just, hey, Inez, please be a little bit quiet. Thanks, bug. Hey, Sydney, thanks for being here. All right, so this paper, and if you guys like this content, hit that like button. That lets me know that I should do more of these or maybe not do more of these. Uh, if you're interested in that, you can share this with a friend or family member. If you're watching the replay, just comment below and I'll try to get back to you. So, two strains of bacteria increased on the ketogenic diet. Uh, the Acromenzia mucinophilia, that was number one, and Parabacteroides, okay? And when these two strains increased, what that did is that actually changed levels of an enzyme called gamma glutamyl transpeptidase, okay? So that enzyme, uh, someone says the study paper is interesting. I spent the whole day searching a way to boost my acumenzium mucinophilia. That is so cool. So I'm going to share with you how you actually do that in a minute. Um, Greg, what's up? All right. People get annoyed watching the replay when I like acknowledge you guys for being here, just so you know. So uh, anyhow, so ketogenic diet. Increase these two levels of these bacteria. These bacteria then change an enzyme called GGT that you've heard me talk about before, gamma glutamyl transpeptidase. That enzyme then changed the levels or the ratio of GABA to glutamate in the brain and delayed the onset of a seizure. So it affected the latency of the seizure in these animals that were kind of like uh, pre, you know, susceptible to getting seizures. So I think it's really cool and, and it speaks to the holistic nature that we should be kind of thinking about when we embark on any dietary change, whether it's our carnivorous diet, a paleo diet, a vegan diet, a whatever, a keto diet, we need to think about a few things like how is this diet going to affect my gut bacteria? How is it going to affect gut health, digestion, uh, sleep? Like all these things are as important as the macronutrients and the hormones that are altered as, as a result of the diet, okay? Um, so I think that's super exciting. Again, just for a lot of you, I see a lot of you coming on, which is awesome. We're sitting here talking about this paper that was just published 
Uh, someone asked me if I do a gut test. Yeah, I do. I, I, the first time I did that was in 2008 with Genova Diagnostics, and I had a pathogen. We call it blastocystis hominis, and I treated that with uh, metronidazole and tinidazole and some other nasty things. And so, anyway, uh, I just recently in the last year did my U-Biome test, but they won't give me the results for some weird reason. I have to, like, get another doctor. I, it's been weird. I don't know. Uh, hopefully, your experience with U-Biome has been better, better than mine. Um, yeah, someone's talking about cauliflower, which is really, really awesome. Um, so, guys, this is the paper. I'm gonna, I'll put a link to it here. Okay, again, the title of this is A Gut Microbiota Mediates the Anti-Seizure Effects of the Ketogenic Diet. I love Cell because Cell published, they, they put these like really cool graphics so that you can see some of the stuff that they're talking about. But it's, it's really powerful. And you guys know this, um, how diet affects the microbiome and then how the microbiome changes uh, then speak to our gut immune system and then how our gut immune system can communicate and alter levels of brain chemistry. Like it's so... The whole body, the systemic effect, this gut-brain interaction, uh, I think it's important. All right, so um, for me, and also I, I do want to just let, you know talk about this. This isn't the first time that we've known that the ketogenic diet um, increases levels of acromenzia mucinophilia uh, because Zhang Ro, who we've had on the podcast, I think it was episode number 163, if you want to learn more from Dr. Zhang Ro, I have a free e-course featuring his work and stuff right below this video. I'll put it in in just a minute when we finish the live. Um, but, but he's shown, he studied his team, a research team at University of Calgary, Alberta, looked at how uh, kids, or an, it was an animal model study of autism, uh, where these animals went on a ketogenic diet and they had autism or autism physiology. I don't know how they induce autism in an animal. But anyhow, it was an autism model they changed the microbiome and the symptoms and the, and the pathophysiology that's characteristic of autism was ameliorated. It was reduced with the diet. So anyway, like I said, this isn't the first time that we've heard about this, but I think there's a lot of people that are skeptical about keto because they've seen uh, a mice study with the title in Science Daily or the Wall Street Journal or New York Times or whatever that says high fat diets alter the microbiome. And yeah, again, we need to look at the context. What does high-fat diet mean in that study? Usually, um, it's a, a not the best form of fat. It's like canola oil, it's soybean oil, it's safflower oil, etc. So, that's it. Uh, uh, Christina says, uh, could you ask someone in your interview sometime about the effects of uh, tubul tubule ligation? Sure, we can talk about that. Um, fasting may change it also. Magic pill movie. Yeah, it's good. I, I think it's good. Like, uh, Jacob, I think you sent me a Facebook message. Um, you know, a lot of the people in that movie we've had on this channel too, you know, so it's, it's kind of the same message that we've been talking about for a while, but it's great to like have it on Netflix and you know, there's a lot of people getting out there. So, uh, so guys, uh, if you like, if you liked what we're talking about now, please hit that like button that lets me know that you like this content that lets Google know that you like these videos and stuff. Um, I, you know, every, when a study comes out, I like to just hop on, on the, on these live videos real quick and just like unscripted off the cuff as I, you know, I'm in my weight room here in the garage. Uh, just wanted to like talk to you guys about it. So, uh, anyway, up next, you know, work on a lot of content for you about metabolic inflexibility and how to become more metabolically flexible, uh, working on a new book. And there's so much research about metabolic inflexibility and, uh, just a little hint, hint, you know, why, why I like to film in my weight room. Uh, is exercise is so key for uh, helping your body to, to become more metabolically flexible. In contrast, uh, sedentary behavior. Gosh, my phone, my uh, movie's moving weird. Um, so someone says, did you notice after you eradicated your parasite? Did I notice improvement? Um, yeah, I didn't have a whole lot of symptoms. It was back in 2008. I was overtraining. I, was, I wanted to be a professional cyclist. And, um, and I did the stool test. I was feeling a little tired. Uh, I, I didn't have any major GI symptoms outside of gas, and that, that did seem to go away. But one thing that's, it's funny that you asked that, because one thing that I've, uh, that I've changed a lot is actually cutting out egg whites. So I used to eat a lot of egg whites, 12, 15, sometimes a day. Uh, you know, just because when I grew up reading Lee Haney's bodybuilding book and Arnold Schwarzenegger and following uh, the bodybuilding.com forums and all this sort of stuff back in the you know, early 2000s, everyone was talking about egg whites and egg white protein. But since cutting out egg whites and just having the yolks, thanks to Amber O'Hearn and a lot of people in the, the carnivorous diet movement, my gas that I used to have, like, it's totally gone. So 
as much as I love my chickens, uh, what I do with the egg whites is I put them in a big bowl and I cook them and give them to my dogs. Um, okay, what are your takeaways from the low carb cruise? Yeah, you know, I'm gonna do, Deanna and I are gonna do a whole nother video on that. Um, but, you know, there's so many. You know, Ken Berry's talk was amazing. John Lemensky's talk was amazing. Uh, Ted Naiman was there talking all about protein uh, and stuff like that. Gas, proof you're still alive. That's funny. Um, so, yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. So, someone. <sighs> Maya says, first time catching you live. Cool. What do you think? Super informal. I'm just wearing a regular shirt here in my uh, squat rack in my garage. There's actually like a bird that lives up there <laughs> in, our, in our garage. Uh, oh, do you guys want to see something cool? Uh, let me just see if she's still here. Let me just see here. Um, so we have a chicken that's broody. This chicken, speaking of metabolic flexibility, uh, I'm not, yeah, I'm ditching egg whites, bro. I'll tell you in a minute. But, uh, so this, we named her Blackie. She is very adventurous. Uh, she has to climb two fences to get over here. <laughs> it's just amazing. Speaking of metabolic flexibility. So this chicken is sitting on her eggs, uh, that are fertile because we have a rooster She's been here since Saturday, just hanging out. She hasn't eaten anything. She will not leave. I'm tempted to just like pick her up and move around. But just think about like fasting and prolonged fasting and, and time-restricted feeding is just hardwired into all animals, right? So, and humans. So it just makes sense that, um, that we should be fasting periodically. Look at me, move, look at this Movi device. It is so cool, this gimbal. Anyway, guys, what do you think about that with the chicken just sitting there, the broody chicken um, hanging out, right? So anyway, intermittent fasting, time restricted feeding. I think that's super, super important. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, a bunch of stuff coming in guys. Um, thanks Maya. Thanks for being here. Thanks zombie fool. Uh, Cindy in the house. Um, that chicken ate when he went to sleep. Yeah. She's been sitting there. Like, I don't know. How long will she go? I, I'm, I mean, it, take, it takes 21 days, I think, for the eggs to hatch. So would she really sit there for 21 days? I'm sure there's chicken people that will chime in and let me know. I'm not really sure. Um, I think it's cool. So, yeah, she's fasting. And it just shows that the, uh, this, that, that motherly instinct, just to, like the will to pass on more life is super, super cool. Zofo, cool. Zombie fool, Zofo, here on out. I will try my best to remember that. So, uh Guys, uh, I know there's a lot of you on now, so we're sitting here, we're talking about this study. Or I'm gonna read you the title, I know it's upside down and backwards. Um, when I do YouTube lives from my phone, I, uh, I can't like put in links and stuff below, unfortunately. Um, so the title of the study is The Gut Microbiota Mediates the Anti-Seizure Effects of the Ketogenic Diet. And so, uh, just a quick review, I know a lot of you have heard this already twice, um, but a new study came out, it was an animal model study at UCLA, and the researchers figured out that in animal models that uh, when they subject these animals to the ketogenic diet, the changes to the levels of two bacteria genus and species, Acromenzia mucinophilia and Parabacteroides, those changes were associated with an, with an effect of an enzyme that I talk a lot about in our e-courses and stuff. I'll put a link below to our free e-course, uh, gamma glutamyl transpeptidase, also known as GGT. This affects the levels of the GABA to glutamate ratio uh, in the brain, that ratio, high GABA, uh, sorry, high glutamate, low GABA, is linked with uh, increased uh, like seizure onset. And so again, by changing the diet, change the microbiome, change levels of an enzyme, which then changes the neurochemistry. And so that was really cool. I think it's super cool. So if any one of your friends, family member, people that you work with are like, I'm not doing keto, keto is bad for your gut, please share this video with them, share with them the study. They need to know this. We need to spread this loud and wide. Uh, greetings from Sweden. Thanks for being here from Sweden. What time is it in Sweden? I have no idea. It's uh, I think almost six here. I can't remember. I, my, I can't see, of course. But uh, I really appreciate you being here from Sweden. So friends, um, actually, we just got some almond trees. Um, you want to see some almond trees? So I'm, I, I'm going to be digging around here um, in our yard. So I know a lot of you are kind of like anti-vegetable. Right now, Nezzy's playing in the yard with Rainy and Shasta. So I'm super stoked. We just got these almond trees and look, they're bearing fruit. I've never seen like an, what an almond looks like. I mean, like a right from the tree, but can you guys see that? So these almond trees, you guys can bend it too. yeah, we can bend it. All right, so 
Uh, we're here to talk about ways to improve your gut health and eating real foods that are, you know, with healthy carbs and good fats like almonds, like walnuts. Let me try and pull one off for you guys. All right. I'm super excited to get these in the ground. So that's what I'm... Who's ever seen that? Unless you've lived in California, you probably didn't know that that's what the almond kind of the nut looks like. And then I think you have to cook this and then crack it open. I'm not, I'm t not totally sure. Um, yeah. Nezzy, do you like almonds? Uh huh. Yeah, you, you make a great point because most almonds in the U.S. are irradiated, man. It is such a, a, a bummer. Um, so Zofo, what do we do? Do, I, do you crack this then cook it? I'm not really sure. Anyway, uh, we're getting off topic. So guys, really appreciate you tuning in. As always, um, you want to see Rainy and Shasta? What's up, Rainy and Shasta? This is Rainier and that's Shasta. Um, you dry them out, okay. And this is, this is Inez. You saw her working out on the beach. For, <laughs> what's up? Hey, thanks for catching us live, guys. Um, Someone is saying bloating, constipated, etc. You got to sign up for the free e-course. Uh, we have a lot of videos on gut health. The Keto Lean Masterclass. Show Safa has tons of stuff all about gut health and so forth. Uh, Crudy says, Mike, I made you live. LOL, new IG follower. So stoked. Hey, thanks for that. Super grateful. Um, what did you guys think of that, that beach workout with Inez? I know some of you were like, it got a lot of thumbs down quickly. I think, I don't know if, why people didn't like that. It was... I thought it was a fun beach workout. Anyway, um, it's a rental car. Yeah, my wife, her car's kind of messed up. So, um, so someone saying says uh, almond is the seed on the inside for something like what you see in the stone of the peach. Yeah, right. So this is I just pulled it off the almond tree. So I'm gonna plant these tonight. I'll share with you guys some pictures if you want later. Um, yeah. So someone keeps asking this question. Uh, Maha Masa House uh, says, how do you uh, suggest killing something like Klebsiella naturally? Um, yeah, well, there's a lot of different herbs, you know, that, that you can use. Berberine is used, uh, you know, garlic. There's a lot of different products on the marketplace. But I would suggest uh, if you know that you have a Klebsiella imbalance, uh, that you work with a natural practitioner that can understand, uh, you know, the dosages of these different compounds. Oil of oregano is another good one. Um, so, so anyway, um, someone says, uh, great beach workout. What beach were you at? Yeah, that was in Cosmo. Um, so... Anyway, guys, all right, I'm going to go back and type in, Kathleen, thanks for being here. What's happening? Uh, we are just I was, I'm planting almond trees here for an evening workout. Um, all right, so guys, if you like this content, if you like these live videos, please hit that like button. That lets me know. Yeah, so crude up. Berberine is great for blood sugar, but it depends on the form. So, uh, you know, berberine hydrochloride is the form that's actually very poorly absorbed. It's good for blood sugar regulation, but kind of the whole berberous compound from the, uh, I think, I think a bayberry, uh, I'm getting it wrong, my names of the plants that the uh, bourbon comes from. Um, but that's actually more kind of bacterial cytal and it kills, uh, you know, it kills pathogens. So anyway, friends, um, I'm going to hang out with Inez and eat some food and then get in the garden. So I hope you have an awesome evening. Thanks for hitting that like button. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. How do we contact each other, Kim? Yeah, uh, become a patron. Go to highintensityhealth.com forward slash insider. That gives you email access to me and, and all that good stuff. Um, so I'm very grateful for our patrons. They really help us keep this channel alive and, and keep us uh, in business, really. So, um, all right, guys. Hope you have an awesome day. Really appreciate you tuning in, whether you're watching replay or not. And then uh, check back in just a minute for those of you guys who are live right now because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put links to everything that we talked about in just a few minutes. So... Have a good one. We'll catch you later. Bye-bye.